and some more of the stations, 10 meters sideband and CW, uh, both boats side by side, and uh, immediately in the foreground, the two 40 meter stations for sideband and CW, uh, side by side. But the antennas are far apart. Okay, next slide. And here's a look at our operating intent. The typical kind of a rental tent that you that people use for uh, outdoor events. Uh, the station in the foreground is our uh, Ridley and PSK stations. And on the far right, just out of the photograph, is our photo station. Next slide. And in the foreground is me. And and I'm on a 20 meter side bin, and to my left is the 20 meter CW operator. No interference whatsoever between those two stations. The antennas are about 250 feet apart from each other. Uh, next slide. This is one of our uh, Ritty and uh, PSK operators. You can see two of the stations right here. Uh, one of the interesting aspects of really a PSK operation is you, if you have four or five stations on here, you don't necessarily need four or five operators all the time. Uh, okay, next slide. And this is our VHF tent. It's a separate small tent. Uh, and it's air conditioned. Uh, next slide. And we also have satellite. The guys who uh, do this are very experienced with satellite operation. They normally make about 25 QSOs. Next slide. So it's important to try to get some elected officials to come to your field day. Our state delegate, who is now a state senator, Gail Bates, that comes every year. The fire department actually pays for our fuel. Uh, they're so impressed by the uh, effort that we put on that they want to support it and they pay for our fuel every year. And they bring their emergency services command post out and it's always set up with us. Uh, next slide. And, and GOTA is, is uh, an, an important part of field day. We always make uh, well over 500 QSOs, and as I mentioned earlier, many of those QSOs are made by people who are not licensed. So the, the, the fellow in the foreground is our coach, KE3Q, and some of the, a couple of, some of the younger folks that are there you can see in the picture. Uh, next slide. And without good food, I think the whole effort would be a whole lot less satisfying. We have great food during the course of the whole weekend. Next slide. We've found that it's helpful, particularly during field day, to have uh, a sign-up sheet for food. Uh, it saves a lot of time, and some of the and the operator actually gets fed. So this is uh, this is our sign-up sheet. And you can choose either to have the food brought to you or to either go and get it yourself. Next slide. Okay. And there are some other things you have to remember. Enough said. Uh, and the weather is not necessarily always good. If you look closely at this slide, you can see the raindrops on that uh, pipe in the foreground. And we've had some pretty severe weather in some years. One year we came very close to losing our tent. Next slide. So this is uh, last year's overall participation level in field day. Last year there were almost 1.3 million QSOs reported to AWRL. The, the, more than half of those are on uh, phone. Those would be most, almost entirely single side then. Followed by CW, but when you consider the two point scoring advantage, the most, most of the points are actually made on CW. And then somewhat less than 5% of the reported QSOs were made on digital mode. Probably about equally split between Ruridi and PSK. There's a remarkable level of PSK activity on field day. 
Next slide. Okay, so this was our uh, record-breaking score. And uh, let me point out one thing about digital. You would think that 10 meters would be a productive bid on digital, but it never is. That year, we made the 12,000 QSOs, but only one on 10 meter digital. So this year, we're not going to be on 10 meters at all. The, the predominance of the activity is on uh, 20, followed by 40 and 15, and then quite a bit less on 80. <coughs> Next slide. And that's it. So, uh, any questions? Hey, Frank. Go ahead. How many antennas you have in your backyard? And what are Oh, they? many more than that. <laughs> the same we could see we didn't have time to get the camera going. Uh, there are, in my backyard, there are 11 towers. What does it consist it's of? On a, it's on about a 10-acre site. Two of the towers are on my neighbor's land. <laughs> and in the winter, another neighbor loans me 10 acres for receiving antenna. Question for you. Uh, approximately, what's your uh, annual budget for field day when you do the large uh, stations? Uh, uh, we we spent no, we spent we spent very little money, very little. Um, we asked each, each participant to contribute about forty dollars, and that's mainly for food and drinks and that kind of thing. Do they, do they, how often do they always run 160? Do they operate 160? Uh, I, I can't hear that question. Do you always run 160? 160 meters? Yes, we always run 160. It, it's it's not well. You probably saw. If you want to go back to that other slide? You can pick up. This can you go back? There you go. That'll give you an idea to its level of productivity compared to the other bands. It's not very good. He's going to do that. He would do 160 over 10. So the question was, you'd rather do 160 digital. over 10 meters? So I think 10 meters, you're talking about digital, right? Yeah. You're just going to do away with the digital? Yeah, 10 meters, well, as you can see, we only made one digital QSO that year. There, there has never been any significant amount of activity on 10 meter digital. I don't know why it should be, but uh, we've never found much. <coughs> Okay, it doesn't seem like there's any more questions. Any more questions for Frank? What kind of, what kind of radio filtering does he use? Yeah, I'm asking about band pass. Band band what kind of uh, band pass filtering you typically use? We use uh, filters made by W3NQN. They can be purchased uh, through, through um, yeah, I forget where they are. But anyway, if you, look, if you look on the web for W3NQN filters, you can figure out where to buy them. How much coax is he uh, Coax, I think he's had it in there. It was a mile and a half of coax? Uh, a little bit less, maybe a mile and a quarter. It's all, it's all RG213, except for VHF, which is half inch helia. And you, and you operate all from the central tent, right? You don't, you don't spread out uh, based yeah, on... Yeah, we, when, we, when we started out years ago, we were spread out, and we concluded that it's much better to operate from a single location rather than having everybody spread all over uh, about 20 acres. What are you running for so, the, so we put the tent in the middle of the site, and and lose a couple of dB in feed line loss, but overall, we think we're doing better because it's easy to organize an effort in a single place. So, you use logging software, right? Which software do you use? Believe it or not, we use CT, okay. running on dark machines. 
Okay. So and, you... and why? Because it's it's so easy to administer it. You, do... you, you don't want software that's very complex to get running or to run into all kinds of difficulties. So we the compromise we've made is to make it as simple as possible. Do you do you hand off? I mean, I, one year I contacted you on multiple bands and you kind of handed me off. How was that handled then? You just yell across the tent? Or do you... No, no. No, we, we use the the uh, the facilities of CT and most other logging programs allow you to do that. So you you pass traffic to, or you know where other, other people are on, right? That's right. Uh, any, any, any of the major logging programs will show you what frequencies you run on every day. Does that help you a lot? So, Does that, do you think that feature helps you get points? Well, I think, I, I think you answered the question because we asked you to move and you actually moved for it, right? <laughs> I did. I don't know if a lot of people do that, though. Oh, a lot of people do it. Okay. Absolutely. What kind of power are you running? Everything's uh, what, typically about 100 watts. Yeah, yeah, there were some other questions in the room. We we have no amplifiers on the site, so we're incapable of running much more than that. Any idea how much electrical power you use for the field day activities? Well, the VHF 10 is air conditioned, and I suspect about half of the power supplies that air conditioner. <laughs> is that your incentive for getting them to work at VHF? <laughs> well, the guy, see, the, the secret to organizing this is to have a band captain for every band. And the guy who was the band captain for VHF decided he was going to build himself an air conditioner for his tent, so he did. And so it's kind of up to the man captain. Hey Frank, this is Greg Lynn. Um, I did get a really nice email from Rich, KE3Q. He documented a lot of things about field day and I got that too. And you know, I've been kind of trying to organize the event here for us to get up to 26A. So I do appreciate you giving us uh, insight. Yeah, it's all, it's, all, it's all about planning and organizing. That'll make it fun. If you're not, if you don't have a, a viable plan before field day, you're going to struggle. I think we're on the mode of struggle. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> now for next year, we're Yeah, they're thinking a KX3 and a piece of wire flung over a tree. No, we were <laughs> we were thinking of all, well, flex, work. all flex radios and uh, really nice beam antennas. With great filters. Well, well, don't forget it's all about having fun. So yeah. I'm sure, and I'm sure you will achieve that. Yeah. Well, thank you, Frank. Appreciate it. Okay. I'll, I'll give you a ring. Yeah. Well, if anybody wants to run a Collins radio on this, uh, we've got a couple. You take the. Uh, Two, the main plant for okay, thanks. Bye. Yeah. And maybe a 380 if you want to run one of those. So, got some options going on. I have the IC7000 right here. We did uh, spring for a better box. And uh, this is a photo camera box. So it's got many. Close them all. Close them all. All right, I think that's all there is. Yeah, we had that great presentation on this antenna. The club bought this MF. Hold on, hold on, hold on. And it went through extensive testing. I picked because if Dave had one, I had to make sure that it was away from all metal and everything. So I just stuck it in the basement on top of my game machine. We were away horizontally. And it was working all over the place with it.
SWR was low, it works. It's a little narrow, obviously. And I was running it horizontal, and I gave it to John Clemens, yep. who ran it vertically at his house in the basement. And I can tell you that I paid, with it, I paid basically no attention to what was around it or how it was uh, oriented under it was vertical. I just stood it up on end like that and uh, ran it. I had a little different uh, uh, experience with SWR. I could get about one and a half to one at the best, typically somewhere around two to one. But nonetheless, I was still able to make plenty of contacts, five watts uh, CW with no problem from my basement. How many watts is that? This will handle a hundred, but I have uh, in the newsletter. There's a whole ton of pictures. Uh, another ham friend of mine had one, and they took it all apart. And this is—it's made horribly. The manufacturing of this product is the worst. Uh, you can see. As you walk out tonight, just take a peek of just the air gaps and stuff. We did not put this outside because I didn't want to get water in it. Basically, it's a stepper motor and a variable capacitor. Yeah, it's, yeah. It, it's not waterproof the way it comes it is, from the yeah, well, yeah. factory. Not at all. It's not weatherproof. Pardon. So I have a whole okay. slew of slides of what we need to do to fix this thing so that it's at least we can stick it outside. Now. So this will an article on. Cedar Valley uh, Facebook post on the magic of uh, magnetic loops. A very interesting article. Some of the pictures were taken out of the PowerPoint. Yeah, and I think I put some of the clips of the thing on top of my game machine and JT65, everything. It was in the shack, just sitting there. And I was using it in the middle, of pretty low, and below ground. So, do you have a field comparison from that? Yeah, that's a